This video will be concerned with the size and scope of organisations. We'll start with looking at the size. Now the size of an organisation depends on its objectives, demand, growth and profit potential. So what we mean by size can be measured in different ways. Uh, we may have uh, a company that implies very few workers but is very profitable. On the other hand, we may have a company who implies a lot of em workers, a lot of employees, a lot of staff, but doesn't make a lot of profit. So we need to settle on what we mean by size and how we measure it. And we can say the same for sales volume or um, uh, investment or any other uh, index we want to use to measure size. Uh, we normally find there are contradictions. If we take different measures, one contradicts the others. As in the example with the number of staff and profitability I just mentioned. So that's something to bear in mind. Now organization size depends um, on the level of activity uh, is the organization um, a local business, say a small business in the local area or town, for example a corner shop or a small shop on one of the, the streets? So what sort of business is it? Is it a local business or is it a national business? A business operating within the country, for example a bank or a big chain store? could even be an international business, a business which sells the products and services overseas. So it depends on the level of activity. Uh, some businesses are very small, some are quite big and some are very very big. So there's nothing exceptional about that. We could have a global business, a business that has operations and outlets based across the globe. Uh, many of uh, the big names, uh, McDonald's, Subway, Apple, Microsoft, many of those operate globally. They operate in all countries. All businesses start at a local level and grow to national, international and global. Generally speaking, we don't have businesses starting at the international level. We don't have startups looking to immediately export and get involved in overseas markets. What we have is normally small businesses that grow into medium size, that grow into large. The large ones further expand and eventually get international and eventually become global. So we have this process of growth starting with very small or perhaps quite small growing to perhaps very large. Businesses develop uh, based on their ambition, the customer demand for the product or in services. There has to be a customer demand for the product otherwise businesses won't grow. So there must be potential in the market for growth. Uh, the entrepreneurs the business people running the, the business must see opportunities in the market for growth. They must think if they supplied more they would sell those extra output, the extra output and would generate more revenue as a consequence and could grow as a consequence. And coupled with that they must have the ambition to grow. Businesses must want it. If they don't it won't happen. If businesses don't want to grow then they won't grow. So it depends on the entrepreneur, it depends on the owner, the person who makes the key decisions. Does that person want a larger business? Business size can be determined if an organization is a small business, a medium sized business, so called SMEs, small to medium sized enterprises and large multinational businesses. So we, we can slot businesses under headings but we have to be very careful about what we mean 
by the size of a business. And we have to be consistent in how we measure businesses. As I said right at the start, it could be that there are very few staff in the company, but it's highly profitable. Now, if we measure the business size in terms of employees, it would look very small. If we measure it in terms of profitability, it would look very large. So we need to be careful about how we measure small businesses or any size of business for that matter. We need to be careful what it is we're using and we should, should be consistent then. Once we've decided on using a certain measure, we should be consistent in measuring the whole sector using that same measuring rod. So we could have it, the amount of capital invested. That could be our basis for measuring uh, business size could be the number of employees it could be um, could be profitability but these tend to be very crude measures in many respects and we need to be very careful about their use small and medium-sized businesses have the following characteristics generally speaking they have a small share of the market they're small businesses so if the market is large then they're going to have a small share of the large market. It could be that the small business operates in a niche market where perhaps there are very few producers but also a very small demand. Not enough demand to uh, sustain several businesses. It might only have enough demand for one or two businesses. And that's all the, the customers need, the output of one or two small businesses. In which case that will be the the, the size of the market. That would be the size of the sector. So <clears throat> if it's a larger market and many small businesses in it, the size of the market will determine the size of the companies. It will also determine the number in the market. Generally speaking they're managed by uh, an owner. They're managed by the person who set up the business. They're, they're small businesses they're, set, uh, they're managed by some person who perhaps started the business and is still involved with the business. Generally speaking, there's the owner of the business. They are an independent entity. They may be registered legally uh, as a company, um, a private company. So they are separate from the owner and there is limited liability. If it's, a, if it's a company. Now large multinational organizations will control a large share of the market as we would expect. They're large multinational organizations so they control large amounts of the market. They manage a large employee base. <coughs> There's a large <coughs> sorry, managerial structure to the firm and they employ many people looking after employees. There will be different functional areas and different areas responsible for different parts of the business and uh, there will be a coordination issue and distribution and so it's a much more complex organization but there will be generally speaking many more employees involved as compared to the smaller business. There tends to be a hierarchical structure uh, with many lines of communications and chains of command. Generally speaking, there is a hierarchical structure. It's a tall structure sometimes known as, uh, where perhaps there's the, the chief executive and the uh, layer of um, directors, or in, in American parlance, the, the vice presidents. And then coming down from there, there will be uh, more directors of divisions, different divisions, one making certain products, one making different products, and one responsible for distribution, one responsible for marketing or whatever. Different functional areas. Um, so the decisions at the very top has to cascade down through the organization. So it's a, it's a much more complex uh, type of structure. Now growth. Well, why do organizations grow? It could be a managerial objective. It could be that the, the management want organizations to grow. 
it's as simple as that they want them to grow they're prepared to uh, invest more and therefore uh, thereby forego dividend payments and bonuses and because they want to use the money to fund investment so the organization grows gets bigger the market sector or industry is growing and expanding then this encourages uh, organizations to grow and maintain their market position so if the market is expanding if companies have let's say a 10 percent uh, share of the market let's say the a company has 10 percent share of the market now the market starts to grow and the company stays the same size it'll no longer have 10 percent of the market because the market has got bigger it'll have a smaller percentage now if the company wants to maintain its 10 percent of the market the company will have to grow as well so the market grows and the company grows resulting in the company maintaining its 10 percent of the market benefits of economics of scale well scale means size and in economics this is an important topic in um, in the discussion of costs and production but size and it means simply as organizations grow they become more specialized and thereby they become more efficient they're able to negotiate discounts on purchases uh, bulk orders they're able to ship their products cheaper because they're able to uh, afford specialist shipping terms um, they're able to employ specialist personnel and have specialized machinery made to process the product all of these and many more give them advantages over small firms so economies of scale tends to cut costs for the larger organizations allow organizations to diversify well when organizations grow they can diversify uh, at one moment they're making a certain product but when they grow they're able to make related products or make products that are similar that are using the same know-how the same skills and competencies and aptitudes of the workforce they're able to use and perhaps share machinery as well but the products are different and as the organization grows the differences become more pronounced so organizations diversify because they grow so they're not just making uh, product X eventually they're making product X Y and Z and so on they're making many more products a result of competitor activities can trigger the need for organizations to grow and expand well organizations tend to operate in competitive environments and competitors are not passive they're active they're watching each other they're watching their strategies they're watching their pricing the quantities of button on the market the design of the product the innovations they're watching everything and as the uh, competitors uh, become more successful in penetrating the market and taking capital share taking market share I should say the the company will will want to diversify and grow to try and fight back to try and maintain its position in the market it'll try to innovate grow and try to beat the competitors in that way now scope well scope for an organization refers to uh, business activity and potential what does the organization do in terms of activities so what does it do does it just produce the product or does it uh, process the raw materials and distribute and market the product the more it does the more scope it's got the the more limited it is the less scope if the company just produces the product and leaves it at that then it's got just that particular aspect of scope 
it just produces the product. But if it produces the product and markets the product and distributes the product and it's got more scope, it's developed more activities. So it needs to decide what are the core competencies and the resources and the economic activities. If the company is very good at production, it doesn't mean the company is good at distribution. So if it's very good at production, that could be its core competency. In which case, perhaps it would be better not to be involved in distribution. Perhaps it would be better to outsource that and have it done by experts. So the company must decide what are its core competencies and perhaps focus in on those because that's where the competitive advantage rests. So what makes the organization stand out from its competitors? Well, <clears throat> a good reputation, quality, uh, cheapness, um, innovation, good design, aftercare service. These are all important and the organization needs to look at all of them to see if it can achieve uh, a reputation in providing these different aspects of the product to the customer. And that's what makes the organization stand out from the competitors. The competitors will, be try will try to do the same thing of course. Factors to consider when evaluating business scope. Well, market forces. Uh, market forces being the number of competitors in the market, but also the disposable income of the customers, the general economic welfare within the community and within the, um, within the local region where your company operates. And these market forces will influence the, the scope of the business. Economic operations, uh, supply and demand, income elasticity. Well, market forces are important because if the company tries to increase the price, it will sell less. Perhaps it will sell less. Which means it will have less customers. Now by increasing the price, uh, if it had the same number of customers, its revenue would have increased. But now, because it increases the price, some customers will move away perhaps to the competitors. So it will sell more, it will have a higher price but have less customers. So its total revenue may be less. So it's put its price up and now it finds it has less revenue because so many customers have left. Now this is the area of elasticity of demand and this is dealt with in separate videos related to economics in particular. So we won't go into that here but the idea is that the companies are not free to set the price. They must be aware that in setting the price they may alienate some customers, uh, lose customers and therefore putting the price up which should result in more revenue could actually reduce the amount of revenue it receives. Industrial structures and competitive analysis. Well industrial structures um, is, to, is related to the degree of competition. Uh, it's looking at what the competitors are doing in terms of innovation, their location, their pricing, uh, the staff, the recruited, uh, their performance over the last year. It's looking at all aspects of the competitors and trying to spot weaknesses in the competitors so that uh, strategies can be designed to exploit the weaknesses. So it's for companies to, to try to work out what they can do. Uh, how can they improve their position in the market? Um, can they offer additional services? if you like, increase the scope of their activity and in that way win customer loyalty or are the competitors currently doing that and therefore it is difficult for them to get involved as well. And you can see from what we've done in this is 
just by talking about the size and scope of organizations, um, we see how complex it is and we can see how many issues are involved. And some of the issues are very big issues, talking about competitor analysis and um, economies of scale, looking at elasticity of demand, looking at all of these very important issues, very important concepts. It means that organizations are not as free as they would like to think, perhaps, about what they do in the market. Uh, they must be aware of what's around them. They must have conducted good uh, SWOT analysis, good a good PEST an uh, analysis, um, looking at their own strengths and weaknesses, and also looking outside to see what the competitors are doing. And look at economic policy of the government and what the government is trying to encourage. Look at the um, the economic welfare within the region in which they operate and look at the market in which they operate and be ever vigilant about possibilities of expanding the market in different areas. Look for alliances perhaps with um, even with competitors but look for alliances that will help them to penetrate new markets and gain a foothold. So it's a it's a very complex piece of work. Um, it requires more than just uh, uh, 44 slides as I've got here. It requires a complete understanding of strategic management and some of the strategic issues that confront businesses. But that's all we're going to deal with in this one. I just want to give uh, a taster as to the importance of size and scope when talking about organizations. So let's leave it at that and say thank you very much and thank you for watching.